Coming up on CBS 7 Morning News, a community of believers is dealing with the devastation of losing their church for the second time this year. A customer is asking for the restaurant that gave her salmonella to help with her medical expenses. And if you're divorced and have kids, you might be facing some consequences if you don't follow through with your child support payments. That story and more coming up on CBS 7 Morning News. Live from the most watched station in West Texas, you're watching CBS 7 News, the breaking news and weather authority. CBS 7 Morning News starts now. Hello, good morning everyone. Morning. So good to see you on this June 15th, 2016. I'm Krista Escamilla alongside Craig Stewart. Good I'm morning, here. Craig. Good morning. Good how's to see you. Good to see you. Yes, how's good everything going in the weather world today? Not bad. Kind of like yesterday. A little bit of storms around the mountainous areas is what we're seeing. Otherwise, get ready for another hot day and the chance of showers and thunderstorms. We're going to go ahead and show you the radar, what we have going on. Actually, look outside Presidio, where again, they were seeing some showers and thunderstorms around the area. But there you have a look at Presidio right now. We'll show you what's going on the radar and there it is. So as we get a little bit closer, you can kind of see those isolated thunderstorms around the Marfa area. Everything moving toward the east northeast right now. And so you're still getting those thunderstorms. Those will die down a little bit later on in the evening hours. You look around Terlingua and uh, around Lajitas. You've got some isolated showers and thunderstorms for the rest of us. Not a whole lot going on, but the heat. Talk about that. 77 right now. No Odessa 79 Midland 75 Big Spring the mid 70s Andrews Wink and Kermit you're right around 77 degrees Pecos 76 Fort Stockton at 77 degrees it is a warm start to another hot day triple digits that's in the forecast we'll tell you about that better chance of rain for the Permian Basin coming up too thank you very much Craig Continuing coverage on a story we've been following for you. We have new details this morning about the gunman behind the Pulse nightclub shooting rampage in Orlando. Investigators tell CBS News that shooter Omar Mateen went to work the day of the shooting as a security guard in a gated community, went home, and then went on his shooting rampage. CBS News correspondent Kenneth Craig has the very latest on the investigation from Orlando. Salman, did you know your husband was going to do this? Investigators are turning their attention to this woman, Noor Salman. She was married to Omar Mateen, the gunman who went on a shooting rampage inside the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. Oh my God, people are getting shot. Police say Salman told them that she and Mateen had gone to the gate nightclub before. She also said she tried to convince him not to go through with the attack. I didn't see, I didn't notice anything. She is a very good girl, very honest and see a person. As investigators dig into Mateen's past, patrons also say they've seen him at Pulse before. He used to come in the bar about uh, on the weekend sometimes. Not only did Mateen call 911, but sources tell CBS News he also made a Facebook post pledging his allegiance to ISIS, all while randomly shooting into the crowd. He looked at me and it just said, take care of me. Please don't leave me. You knew I was going to take care of him. You knew if you said something bad about him, I was going to be the one that was going to take up for him because he was more than just a friend. He was like a brother. Demetrius Nolling survived, but his friend Eddie Justice, a 30-year-old tax accountant, was one of the 49 people who didn't make it out alive. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Orlando. Now, the city of Orlando is expecting to announce the opening of a family assistance center to help the victims later today. The nation is mourning the loss of the 49 people who were killed at Pulse nightclub. And yesterday in Odessa, a candlelight vigil was held in remembrance, but also to reflect on the tragedy. There was prayer, people shared stories, and simply gave hugs, hoping to bring comfort in any way they could. Those that gathered said the vigil was a way for the community to lean on each other and show support. It's all about... Uh, bringing the good out of out of a bad thing. Members of the LBGT community, Tim Hogan said he hopes that the tragedy will unify them and remind them to keep fighting for their rights. And just the emotions that people must be going through right now. You never expect to lose people so young in your life. 
Flowers in Jacksonville is hoping, uh, excuse me, hoping to lift some of the financial burden by donating all the floral arrangements for the funerals of the victims of the terror in Orlando. With arrangements costing up to $1,000, this shop, along with their sister store in Claremont, plan to cover the cost of labor supplies and delivery to help the victims' families. Whatever they want us to make, we're not going to put any limitations on it. If we can get the flowers, we will make them whatever they want. The vice president of Cun Flowers, Michelle Morgan, says she feels helpless as 49 families are now planning funerals after a senseless attack, and this is just one way to reach out. We have new details this morning. A family is mourning the loss of their loved one after a drunk driver ran a red light and killed a woman in a car crash. Now, the crash happened on 38th and Andrews Highway around 1030 Tuesday night. CBS 7 has learned that the woman pronounced dead at the scene was 44-year-old Susan Delgado. Jahari Hill is now being charged with intoxicated manslaughter. Fire crews responded to a brush fire that spark was sparked in Alpine. And, of course, weather is to blame from the lightning. The department says the fire sparked at North Double Diamond around 5 p.m. Monday. Crews do believe it was lightning that caused the fire, and within two hours, the lightning, uh, the fire that is, was contained by four firefighters on the scene. No word on the extent of damage to land or property. A church goes up in flames for the second time in Howard County. Fire crews consider it a total loss. Just a year ago, the same building was the scene of a fire. Investigators believe that fire was set intentionally. Crews responded to extinguish the fire yesterday, but most of the church had already burned. This time, since the church was vacant, the fire department did not use water in efforts to not wash away any evidence. It saddens me that somebody hates God that much that they want to destroy the house of God. I hope they're caught. No one was injured in the fire. Howard County Volunteer Fire Chief Tommy Sullivan says the Big Spring Fire Marshal will be on the scene today to complete an investigation. After several confirmed reports of salmonella contamination at Ahua's in Odessa, a customer that was affected reached out to CBS 7 asking if the restaurant can be held accountable for her medical bills. Medical bills, as you know, can be expensive when treating an illness, and according to one woman, her emergency room bill on top of her medication to treat food poisoning should be paid for by the restaurant. We spoke to the owner of Ahua's in Odessa, and he tells us he totally agrees. I just want them just to pay my bill. That's it. I don't want nothing else. I just want them to pay my bill. So the next step for that is to go and compensate these people. By compensating these people, we and we have the, an insurance, which is good insurance. Now, the source of the contamination is still unknown, but the restaurant is back open after score, uh, scoring well during their health inspection. According to the CDC, about one million people get sick from salmonella every year. That makes salmonella the most common food bacteria in the United States. We're taking a closer look this morning at a new method that is punishing parents behind on their child support. Now, the Texas Attorney General's office says they have found a new way to punish parents behind on their payments, and now they're starting to block vehicle registration renewals. The agency plans to employ the new tool beginning this fall against parents who have not paid child support for at least six months. The new measure will apply to vehicle registrations up for renewal starting this December. Parents will also receive a letter from the Child Support Division ahead of their vehicle registration expiration date with information about steps that you can take to remove the hold on their renewal. Well, this year's STAR test will not be released today as anticipated. Uh, it will be now in the week of July 4th. Now, according to the state, these scores were originally set to be released today, but now MISD has given parents a notice that the scores will not be distributed to the schools until July 11th or the week of July 11th. Now, the state is using this extra week to conduct additional quality control checks and verifications to ensure that results for all students are error free. Turning now to Brewster County, the jail is nearing capacity. Brewster County Sheriff Ronnie Dodson tells the Alpine Avalanche a majority of the inmates are illegal immigrants. The county contracts with U.S. Marshals to take in their arrestees. Last year, that contract generated $700,000 for the county. Most of those inmates were arrested for either illegal entry 
or drug charges. Sheriff Dodson says most get deported or bond out. He believes the solution is to build a new jail with more space, but that means a bond issue and vote by the public. No word if or when that will happen. County leaders continue to push back from efforts to consolidate Andrews County Road work to just one position. Precinct 1 Commissioner Barry Fowler proposed the idea at a recent meeting, but didn't receive much support. Precinct 3 Commissioner Jeannie Andereg says that it would be a grave error for the county. Now Commissioner Fowler has started a petition that could put the proposal up for a vote during the November election. If approved, commissioners would no longer oversee roads in their precincts through individual road bridge budgets. It would be changed to a consolidated system under a hired engineer. Other commissioners have voiced their concerns with proposals saying it would cost the county more money. The United Family has donated over 14,000 pounds of food to the West Texas Food Bank. United Family operates Market Street and Albertsons in Midland and Odessa. As part of its 100-year-long uh, anniversary celebration, United is donating food to food banks across Texas and New Mexico. We recently sat down with the executive director of the food bank to talk about how important this donation is. But we've created a perfect storm. The economy is down. We've got more kiddos who need our help right now. We've got a really hot summer ahead. It's going to be 104, I think, today. So it's, it's definitely, we're just, we're in a cycle. The United Way donated over 100,000 pounds to local food banks in West Texas, Dallas, and eastern New Mexico. Become a trust, uh, true that is, West Texas hero, the 22nd annual Oil Patch Kids Invitational Golf Tournament. This two-person scramble benefits foster children and other at-risk children of the Permian Basin who are victims of abuse, neglect, or poverty. The tournament takes place July 15th and 16th at the Hogan Park Golf Course in Midland. To change lives and give hope, register your team today at oilpatchkids.org.